There it is, my powder coated and re-geared Dana 44. Welcome back to the garage, the place where we're making your Bronco your dream Bronco. Hey, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. Follow along in the journey as I am fully restoring this 1974 Ford Bronco. I bought this Bronco for $2,000 and my plan is to fully restore it, keeping track of every dollar and every hour spent to in the end, hopefully make a profit. Now today, what we're talking about is how to re-gear and reassemble a Dana 44. Now there are a couple things before we jump into the assembly that I want to talk about. First, I didn't actually do the work. I took my axles to Tennessee Classic Trucks just outside of Nashville. Now Carl, the owner, is a Yukon certified master axle builder wizard guy and he did a fantastic job on these axle builds. Now secondly, I'm going to skip over the part where Carl is analyzing the tooth pattern where he's, you know, putting the paint, yellow paint on the the gear teeth and, and reading and, and analyzing that part. I'm gonna skip over that part because I wanna focus more on the assembly side. So if you're looking for a video on how to read a tooth pattern, this isn't the video for you. But if you're looking for a video on how to assemble a Dana 44, you're in the right spot. Now another thing is there's a lot of specialty tools that you'll need when you're doing this type of project. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up some of these tools as well. But some of the tools that you're gonna need are a case spreader to get the carrier out, a magnet and a dial indicator with the arm to set the preload, an impact driver, impact sockets, a torque wrench, a bearing puller, a shop press, and an inner axle seal installer. Here are all the parts to re-gear a Dana 44 and a Ford 9 inch. I'll put a parts list in the description below. I got all of this from Tom's Off-Road. So my Bronco originally had 350 gears and I'm gonna re-gear it to 450 gears with a thick ring gear. The first step to re-gear the Dana 44 is draining the fluid and removing the carrier inside. There are two bearing caps and four bolts. Make a note of which cap goes on which side so you can put it back together the same way. Then, with the carrier removed, using a bearing puller, remove the bearings from the carrier. After this, remove the 10 bolts that hold the ring gear on the case. With the bolts removed, use a hammer to free the ring gear from the carrier. Next, using a file, gently file down any high spots or burrs on the carrier that could keep the new ring gear from sitting flush. Then do the same thing on the new ring gear, removing any burrs on the surface. Then using a small grinder, lightly hit the sharp edges on the ring gear. Then lightly hit the sharp edges on the teeth of the ring gear and pinion. This will reduce the chances of noise or whining from the Dana 44 under load. An interesting way that Tennessee Classic Trucks ensured a tight fit from the ring gear to the case was by heating the ring gear up until it expanded enough to fit onto the ring gear case. With the ring gear heated up, apply some red Loctite on the 10 bolts. Then slide the ring gear onto the case and screw it into place. Yeah, 
Okay, means it'll fit right. <laughs> The ring gear and case need to be tightened down to 55 foot-pounds, so a way to hold the ring gear and case is to clamp it into a shop press with just enough pressure to keep the carrier from spinning. With all the bolts tightened down to 55 foot-pounds, set the ring gear to the side and set up the pinion. Because there's no shim between the bearing on the pinion, press the bearing onto the pinion using a shop press. Once the bearing is fully seated on the pinion, seat the outer race onto the Dana 44 housing. The race does not have any shims and does not need to come out again. The next step uses a setup bearing and race. This is because the pinion depth is set by using shims behind the race. You don't want to damage your new bearing and race when pulling it out and hammering it in over and over as you set up the pinion depth. The first time you put the setup race in, put in the factory shim depth to begin with. Then insert the pinion. Then using the setup bearings, Slide the bearing onto the pinion and place the old yoke, washer, and nut onto the pinion and tighten it down with an impact wrench. Then measure the preload by using a drive beam torque wrench to measure rotating torque. The rotating torque on the pinion should be between 14 to 19 inch pounds. Remove the shims to increase pinion bearing preload or add shims to decrease pinion bearing preload. Then finish getting the Dana 44 housing ready by using an inner axle seal installer to set the two inner axle seals in place. Back on the carrier, slide on the stock shim depth as well as a setup bearing. Again, using a setup bearing for this is an important step so you don't damage the new bearing when changing the shim depth. Then, with the help of a case spreader, slide the carrier back in the axle housing and put your bearing caps on. Make sure to put them on in the same way they came out and torque them to 65 foot-pounds. Then, using a magnetic dial indicator, measure the backlash and how far the ring gear can move without moving the pinion gear. You want between six to ten thousandths of free movement. Using the shims below the carrier bearing, move the ring gear closer to the pinion to decrease backlash, or move the ring gear farther from the pinion to increase backlash. Now that the pinion depth pinion bearing preload, and the backlash are set, the last measurement is the carrier bearing preload. To measure this, paint some gear marking compound on the ring gear and spin the ring gear. Now this is the point when you will read the wear pattern on the ring gear from the pinion. And at the beginning of this video, I said I wouldn't be focusing on that in this video but I'll explain some of what Carl and Mike went through. Each time Carl and James would remove the carrier in the pinion and add or remove shims based on the gear pattern they were seeing. And each time they reinstalled the pinion and carrier, they checked the pinion depth, pinion bearing preload, and the backlash.
One discovery I didn't actually catch on camera was that they initially forgot to put the oil slinger on the pinion. Before the final assembly, they figured this out and put it on, which helped get the gear pattern just where they wanted it. Once the gear pattern looked right, they removed the setup race and setup bearings and installed the new race and the new bearings. Then they checked all their specs one last time and tightened everything down. So that's it. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to check out some of the other videos as I restore this 1974 Ford Bronco. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.